So I'm really excited about organizing this meeting on mitochondria and heart and, and skeletal muscle. Very interestingly, um, there are two communities that study mitochondria in muscle. There's a community that studies mitochondria in cardiac muscle and a group that studies mitochondria in skeletal muscle. Um, they have somewhat separate meetings. Um, and what's really interesting is that many of the insights that um, are, are coming forward in terms of mitochondrial energy metabolism, how um, changes in mitochondria will signal to the rest of the body, actually do have parallels between these two systems. So we think that by putting both of these groups together, we'll have um, a really strong opportunity for cross-fertilization. As you know, um, there's tremendous in interest now in metabolism as it relates to mitochondria. Certainly in the cardiovascular system, there is strong interest in the link between mitochondrial metabolism and heart failure, mitochondrial metabolism and cardiac growth and hypertrophy. These issues are a little bit different in skeletal muscle, of course, but um, clearly as the largest organ in the body, um, skeletal muscle plays a very, very important role in energy expenditure in the regulation of um, posture, gait, um, even, even things like body weight. And more importantly, that um, changes in mitochondria have been linked to systemic metabolic disorders, such as um, diabetes, for example, which can then have impacts also on the heart. So I think that in a holistic way, there is significant integration between these two systems. I think that holding this meeting jointly with a meeting on mitochondria and aging is also very significant for a number of reasons. Number one, um, there is a strong link between mitochondrial biology and aging. There's a strong link between aging and sarcopenia. There's also a strong link, link between aging and cardiovascular disease. So I think that a lot of the basic work that's linking um, mitochondrial biology with aging processes will have direct relevance within the heart and within uh, skeletal muscle as well. The, the conference really is aimed at anyone who is interested in the nexus of um, mitochondrial metabolism and mitochondrial signaling with um, both the function of cardiac muscle and skeletal muscle, and importantly, the integration of both of these systems. So, so I think that the meeting will uh, um, appeal broadly to um, scientists in the realm of um, biophysics, biochemistry, and physiology. I think it will also um, appeal to clinicians, um, particularly those who are thinking about um, cardiac function and particularly heart failure, and also um, those individuals who are treating um, muscle diseases of the elderly, for, for example, um, sarcopenia. Also, um, individuals who are interested in inherited um, disorders of mitochondrial metabolism. Many of, of the patients who are afflicted by these conditions will, will pre present with skeletal muscle symptoms, such as um, myopathy or, or, or um, weakness. Um, from an in industry perspective, I think that there's significant interest in um, can the mitochondria in fact be a drug target. We know, for example, something as straightforward as um, mitochondrial ROS production, which can be good or can be bad, um, which can be good or can be bad, but um, are there ways that we, for example, can modulate that therapeutically um, in ways that can have an, an, an impact on the outcome of certain um, disorders associated with impaired mitochondrial function, such as um, diabetes, for example. This decade and perhaps the next decade will be the decade of the mitochondria. This lowly organelle that was um, initially thought just simply to be providing ATP for energy clearly is um, regulating multiple functions within cells. Um, and having a significant role in signal transduction. I think that this meeting that combines a, a, a deep dive into uh, mitochondrial biology in cardiac muscle, in skeletal muscle, and also overlaying that with our interaction with the um, aging meeting will bring significant new insight and I would also um, imagine significant new collaborations that will increase our understanding of the um, way in which um, mitochondrial energy metabolism, um, mitochondrial regulation of um, other cellular functions such as 
um, ionic homeostasis, um, ways that mitochondria might regulate cell fate or ways that mitochondria might um, regulate um, cell death pathways will all have a significant impact in understanding uh, a number of um, clinical disorders that affect both skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. Um, and certainly within skeletal muscle, an important one that will become increasingly important as the population ages will be um, sarcopenia or um, age-related muscle weakness. I think that the Keystone Symposia really represents a very unique um, organization because it touches so many aspects of life science. I think I can hardly think of any other organization that has the breadth and reach in terms of um, individuals who are at the forefront of their fields scientifically as a way to bring them together. The other aspect of, of Keystone meetings, which I, I have really valued over the years, whether as an attendee or as a speaker or as an organizer, is the relatively small size of most Keystone um, symposium meetings and the, the intimacy of the, the sessions and the intimacy of the poster sessions, the accessibility of all of the researchers, both to each other as well as to um, trainees, for example. And um, as a consequence of that, I personally have um, benefited in terms of forming new collaborations that I ordinarily wouldn't have formed had I not had the opportunity to spend two or three days in close proximity with, with somebody whose work I may have known about before or whose work I actually learned about because of their presentation. And that's really a unique um, aspect of the Keystone Symposium meetings.